I'm not sure if you've asked this question already whether Affinity Designer has a text tool that could move from one text box to another. For example, if you have a document um, and let's say you go to the text tool, we're going to choose text frame tool and you add a little bit of text there. I'm going to right click and just say insert filler text so we can put some object to text. You'll see if I if I move this box, the text will just fill up there. Okay, so this is just that uh, lopsum ipsum text that we get along. So if we want to text there and here, I'm just right to click again, insert for the text. And say we wanted a column down here. Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, if we wanted to do something like this where we add text and we're going to have images put in between. Now, usually, this can be done inside Publisher, um, Affinity Publisher, okay? But if you want to work inside Affinity Designer and you only add Affinity Designer, um, but you had a friend that had Affinity Publisher, you, you possibly could have this done. But before I talk about a friend with Affinity Publisher, um, let's go to Affinity Publisher and look at the scenario that you're use your go let's go new okay so if you are working with the very same page there and you came to a that's a artistic text we go to the text box here would be the same if you drag in right click and insert filler text i'm just going to arbitrary drop areas there and, and one down here and insert filler text so pretty much this is the same as I discussed now with the Affinity Designer. Okay, so we have these structures with filler text in. But there's something interesting. If you click on here, you'll notice if you hover here to the bottom, you can see there's a little arrow. Now that arrow, if you click on it, it's got a few other features where, you know, you can create one object and click on there. And when you draw the second object, it fills up automatically. This is filler text, so this is not text that's been pasted in here. This has got some dynamic feature in it, um, but I'm just using it as an example. So in a case like this, if you want the text to go from here down to the bottom and across there, but flow over, you click over there, left mouse button, and if you hover over here, you'll see it will change color. If I click in here now, there it shows the link that it has. So any text that overflows here will go in here, and here I've got text if I click here I can go there and it will flow okay so that's the flow so if I come in here and I double click my cursor will go right to the start of this uh, box this Epsom Lobson because um, it understands that I just want to do some sample text in there usually we have to delete all of this text out but I want to keep it filled up um, so if I start typing anything you will see it starts to go down but can you see it filtering down into the next box and there it starts to jump to the other thing. But the best way to actually see this is I'm going to type something towards the bottom and then it's going to flow over and you'll see it coming there. But the challenge is if you click here at the bottom, you can't select and stop typing here because it will always, even if I go into this box here, it will always go to start right, right on top. Okay, so to make this editable, which is not really part of this whole process, but if because I want to show you, I'm going to type right at the edge of the box. I've got to right click on this box and then click on expand field. So it, it takes away this formatting of this lopsum ipsum and it just turns it all into conventional text. So I'm going to click that. Okay, so now if I click here, just click off. If I click here at the bottom, you'll see my cursor comes right to the bottom. And now I'm going to just Put zeros but as I type zeros you're going to see it flows over the box okay even if I go here I'm zeros as we go over can you see the zeros all filtering over if I go at the bottom here and I maybe type in sevens you can see it goes and watch watch here to the top there the sevens start to filter over so this flow works here so that's the flow I'm talking about but now how do we get this document to work inside designer now if you have publisher really you don't need to go over to designer because if you have publisher and designer you just need to go to the top here click 
designer persona, then you have the full, pretty much the full affinity designer here. You can work as if you're in designer. It's literally that. That's the power of this bridge between these three programs. In future, I think they, they will probably be embedded like this as three personas. Okay, so if you've got affinity publisher, you really don't need your problem to be solved like I'm explaining now. But we're just going to assume that you want to work in, in Affinity Designer. So in that case, what you would do is if you have Affinity Design and Publisher, you'll come to Publisher, you'll create these links, and then you can literally go and select these areas. So you select all of this, you go Control c to copy, and I'm going to open Affinity Designer. Let me just clear these things off the page here. And I'm going to go Control v and Paste. Oops, I don't think, let me go Control z I don't think I selected everything here. Let me just do it one at a time. Click there, hold down Shift there, hold down Shift there. Control c Copy. And Control v I have now copied it just from that app to this app. Okay? Now, understandably, I've said the better option is really just to stay in Publisher if you have both the programs. But if you insist on coming here, look at this. I've just copied it there and I've pasted it in here. If I come in here now and I get, uh, let's see. There we go. Let me just put this here. Now I'm going to type G. And you see the G's come maybe from there. I'm going to type H's. Can you see the H is starting to flow? My cursor flows right. It goes from there and you start to see how it starts to push the text down over there. Okay, so it's, it is keeping the flow. You don't see the handles here though. Okay, but if I do this, you can see it's connected to each other. It's all connected to each other now. Okay, so normally when you fill in your actual text, you'll of course go select and press, oops, yeah. So I'm going to just type some squiggles in here. You, you don't see the boxes. Let me say Control A, copy that, and just go V V V V V. Okay, can you see there? Those text boxes are functional to do the text overflow, and you you still will be able to manage it by. Oops, let me grab the edge here. When you size it, they're all dynamic because it inherits that feature from publisher. Now, I just want to say that for, um, or let me just clear this up. For folk who don't have publisher, but possibly as a friend who has publisher. Okay, so if your friend's got publisher, maybe you can ask them just to create a, the columns. Um, one day you will buy publisher, but if you don't have it, Ask your friend to create the columns that you want. Um, pretty much it's just to create the links between columns. Uh, what could be is you could say, listen, you create four links between columns. So then they'll maybe have to come in and draw another column. And yep, if I click in here, I'm going to click there and click down here. Okay, so you say to them, connect four columns for me and you'll then manipulate them later. So what would you ask them to send you is literally go and save as what they need to save this. And I, I was busy doing an example, which is here by text flow. I'm going to just delete that, press that and delete it. Let me just see that it is gone. OK, so then we can call it text flow. And this is the affinity publisher. Now, this is the beauty that the publisher program, the inherent file format is this literally the same as Affinity Photo, as Affinity Designer. That's why you're able to do these embedded integrations. And as I always say, people will say, but why can't we have this text overflow in Affinity Designer as a standard feature? Yes, it would be nice, but then people are going to start trying to design multiple pages in Affinity Designer and not use the proper tool and then get stuck with another feature and then request that they move another feature from publisher to design and then it's going to keep on going like that so let's keep them at the moment in those three individual silos so yeah i've saved it as a publisher file so say i was your friend and you needed for overflow text things like this i created in publisher i send you the publisher file now 
In this scenario, you only have Affinity Designer. Okay, so let me just even close this. What you do is you'll go File, Open, and go find that file, which is this one. Okay, now you'll see there it's Affinity Publisher, but it's showing as Affinity Designer file here because you are now going to engage it in Affinity Designer. Isn't that cool? So if I open it here, I've just opened an Affinity Publisher file and you can see here it's still got the the master page because in Affinity Publisher it works with master pages and so forth. But look at this. If I go and I click in here now or select this here and I say I say this is the coolest thing. Okay, can you see it's it's jumped over into okay now I'm just typing a lot of nonsense. But just to show you that the text block up top here, look there it's jumping into there. And then if I move this you can see how the text is all dynamic. And where are we now? We are in Affinity Designer. Okay, so what it's done is brought this formatting across here. Same thing I showed with uh, other tutorial I did on how to create and keep perspective by bringing live filters in. In the same way we bring live filters across here uh, from Affinity Photo. Okay, so what we're doing is inheriting the features of Publisher into Designer by opening this document here. Okay, so you, you could do the copy and paste like I showed you if you had both and you chose to do that. In this case, yeah, I'm opening a publisher document or in publisher, you could come into publisher and just say file and say edit in design. It will do the same and open it up there. Okay, uh, but your friend sends you this and this will make you happy. The other way that you can do is if you have a document, let's say you have a a new document. Now you're not seeing my dialog box pop up here because it's on my second screen. It's here because I'm just clicking it on the other screen. If you have a document and you want to bring that document with a text flow, that publisher document, it works exactly like any other affinity file. You can embed it in here. So I would go and say place. I'll go to that file, place that text flow publisher file. And I'll say, let's place it over here. Okay. There we go. And we have that dynamically. The only difference with placing it in here now is that you, you really can't directly edit it here. It works like an embedded object, as you see here. You've got to double click on it. It will open up a new tab with this file where you can modify it and it will stay live linked. Let me show you if I double click on here. We've now just opened up the embedded file. But working here in isolation, we can't see what happens on the original one is a bit awkward. So what I suggest, we, we dislodge that window and I'm going to just place it here. If you have two screens, of course, you'll put one onto the one side and one on the other side. OK, so I'm just doing this as an example. This is the embedded file here. So now I can go in here and I can manipulate and you'll see it will live update here. Like any other embedded file, it keeps a live real-time feedback. So now I can see maybe I want to create the columns and so the embedded document is edited in its own container. Okay, so that's the difference if you embed it, if you place it on the object. If you just open the object and it, it works as per normal like you're editing and it will keep the, the flow. So hopefully this has given you a bit of insight. Um, so hopefully that helps you and uh, gets you along the way. Have a fantastic day and God bless.